Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Evilocity here, bringing you with my opinions and thoughts on Dragon Ball Fighters, the next upcoming Dragon Ball game that is set to be happening sometime during January. I can't remember the release time on the top of my head, but it is coming around January. And, well, if you already know, I kind of actually made a video about this, kind of, like, back when it was first revealed, but... Think of this as more of like a revamp, or a redux, or whatever you want to call it. Basically, a more professional look at it, just because the game is coming very, very close. Like, we are almost at the release time, so I thought that i make this video, and then even do another <laughs> follow-up after this video with my actual somewhat review of this. Some Similar to what I did with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. So I guess I'll start at the very beginning of my actual first experience with Arc System Work games. The very first one I was very introduced was Chaos Code back during the PS3 era. I played it for a good chunk of time. I didn't spend a whole lot of time with it, but it was enough for me to get a good feel of the game. Then onwards it was Persona 4, Arena, then Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger, and then just so on and so on. Like those three first games were kind of like, you know, my first introduction into Arc System Work games. I did a little research of them afterwards. Like I think during Blaze Blue is when I started doing more actual research on them. I saw that they made the series Guilty Gear, which I have heard of before and stuff. Around that time, of course, I'm more familiar with it now. And as you can tell from the background, I'm playing Exard, and I'm not really the best at it. I haven't even played it in a while, anyways. Uh, Marvel Infinite basically took over, but you get it. Yeah, I was like, I guess. You could say a fan of their work. I still wasn't completely hooked onto this company, but I could tell they made some pretty awesome ass fighters. Definitely for Persona 4 Arena, and that's still one of my favorites from them, just because the sprite quality is just fantastic. I'm a sucker when it comes to good quality sprites. So now we fast forward to 2015, I believe. I don't really remember. I, I'm guessing around that time when Dragon Ball Xenoverse was becoming a thing and stuff. Got a lot of news for the game. It was looking like a pretty solid MMO slash fighter for Dragon Ball. You know, overall it looked really cool. But then on the sideline there was another Dragon Ball game being developed titled Extreme Butoden, made by, well, guess what, Arc System Works. I don't think, you know, they were fully, um, like the full team was on it. I don't really know the process of this, but all we know is there were people from Arc System work making or help developing uh, Extreme Mutoden. When I saw it, I was starting to like, damn, this game kind of looks a little better than Xenoverse. Till this day, I never really played. I played like a glimpse of it before, nothing too much. But you know, I'm like looking at it, I'm like, damn, I kind of want to see like an actual console Dragon Ball game like this. I'll be like, a dream come true and stuff and then that's when I was starting to look more into the internet getting exposed to Hyper Dragon Ball Z a fan made Dragon Ball Z movie which you definitely should check out if you haven't already it is fantastic a lot of love was put into it but around this point I started getting an obsession of how a Dragon Ball game of this nature will start to play out if it was like on consoles and then you know after that I just kept wanting a game like that it was kind of like you could say my dream Dragon Ball game for a bit. And well, you know, finally, finally it actually happened. Arc System Work Games is, of course, developing Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, God, you, if you could already tell from my other uh, video of me giving my thoughts and stuff, that was just a pure hype. But either way, you could tell that I was just absolutely, like, loving how this game was looking and stuff. It was like a dream come true, basically. This is what I wanted in a Dragon Ball game for quite some time now. Not my whole life or anything like that, but it's something that I really wanted to see. Everything was looking peachy. <laughs> Everything was just looking perfect to me. So, yes, the game is coming close. We're almost here. So, now that I look back at that video and... Now that I'm seeing the news we're getting for fighters now, I feel like I can be a bit more professional, not just talk just from pure hype. Like, I want to look at this as 
you know, an actual Dragon Ball fan and a fighting game fan and see how well this game is pulling up so far. Like I said, so far, you know, the, even though the game is coming close to um, release, there's a lot of stuff we still don't know about it. So that's why most of this stuff will probably change when I do a reviewish type for this game. But for now, yeah, this is basically where my thoughts are on the game. Now, when I view fighters, there's things that I absolutely love about the game. And then there's some stuff that I don't really like in particular. I'll get in with the stuff that I absolutely love. First off, the visuals, of course. Like, even when the very first announcement trailer up to now, the visuals have been nonstop amazingness. I love, I just love how the characters look. I love like how level three specials and stuff like that how they're pulled off and the animation to them i love the stage transitions i love the stages themselves like the visual department is like it's spot on man it looks absolutely gorgeous guilty gear was already gorgeous looking game and seeing it implement in the dragon ball style where there's a lot of flashy shit going on yeah i you know it's just amazing and stuff so that's looking great now i want to talk about the gameplay which is not from the looks of it not as deep as marvel vs capcom infinite just for a more recent example but i guess it doesn't have to be that deep you know i'm i guess you could call it a casual peasant i play a lot of fighting games but it doesn't mean i'm the best at them i just love playing them i could play them for hours and hours and shit like that so you think you know this is actually a good thing it's not the most deep thing and well it kind of is but for the actual learning department you know, I guess it isn't as much of a learning curve as a lot of people are making it out to be from what the looks of it and the little bit that I've got to actually play. You know, of course I could change when the game actually comes out and stuff, but from looking at, you know, there's not too much to learn, which isn't bad at all. That's not a bad point and stuff, but because of that, when I even when I look at gameplay footage, it can result to most characters kind of playing out the same. Like I said, not a bad problem. Like, I have to stress this enough. It's not a bad problem. But, you know, and these characters obviously do you look unique. Except they do have their own unique um, style of gameplay. A lot of stuff about them is, you know, unique. But from what I've seen, how they play out, a lot of it turns out to look the same. So... That's going to probably change, you know, game is still in development. I don't think it's going to get a complete overhaul, no shit. But there's going to be, you know, a lot of things to expect during launch that we didn't really know ourselves. So it's kind of hard to judge at such an early state, even though we got a playable bait on our hands. And we're going to get another one during January. I still feel like, okay, maybe around that point, it's, you know, too early to say. But I thought I'd want to point that out, that the gameplay does look very, very fun, but it isn't as deep. And it got, it, it has me just slightly worried that it could turn off repetitive at some points just because of this. Like most Dragon Ball games, you know. To be honest, you know, a lot of Dragon Ball games, characters kind of play the same. Fighters is trying to break that mold, and I'm glad for that, you know. We needed this icebreaker. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's, it's Dragon Ball. Something we've seen for quite some time now. When I look at this, it's, you know kind of like other Dragon Ball games, just in a different style. Now a bad point I wanted to bring out, and this is going to the game and kind of the marketing to the game too, is the actual character roster. Yes, you know, I know, the game isn't out yet, there's still characters that they haven't revealed yet. I'm, I kind of have like a little thought in my head on what the last characters will be and stuff. You know, that's not the problem or anything, but that's one thing I'll say, you know, uh, the roster isn't looking the biggest. I wasn't expecting it to be big anyways and stuff, but I love playing Dragon Ball game for the characters. Like, it's cool that it's in a different style like this, where you feel more engaged into the battles and stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I mostly play Dragon Ball games just for the characters and stuff. And, I mean, I do have my favorites in the game. Trunks, TN, I can't wait to see the Ginyu trailer that's going to be happening anytime soon. So that's all looking great and stuff. There's nothing actually bad about the character roster. It's just that from playing so many other Dragon Ball games in the past, it's, you know, something I had brought up that, you know, in comparison. And yes, I know, I understand why 
of course, you know, this, you know, for a game like Arceus and where it's developing Dragon Ball, it, it's taking more time for each character and stuff, but I just wanted to still point that out that, you know, not as much characters and that's, it's still kind of disappointed and stuff and it's, you know, bad that so far we haven't really seen any super characters yet. And speaking of super characters, they're most likely going to be the eight DLC characters for the game. Now this is something I kind of dislike, like, you know, this game was obviously going to have DLC characters, that's not really the problem, you know, every fighting game has DLC characters, um, some are good, some are bad, whatever, you know, that wasn't really the problem, the problem was how they kind of promoted it out. Like, look at it in this way, the game, you know, we don't even know the entirety of its roster, alright, you know. There's still characters that haven't been announced. We don't know who. Yeah, we don't know the number of the base roster. But yet, we have an exact number of DLC characters coming into this game. Like I said, it's... The way they did it was in an annoying way, basically. And I know most people feel like, you know... Because this is like, you know, a lot of people are hating on this. Like, lots and lots and lots of people are hating on this. But most are saying, like, you know... They're taking out characters from the main game and putting them behind the paywall. No, I don't think that's the case at all. I really feel like, you know, these characters aren't done at all and stuff. But that's the thing. We have an exact number, so we so most likely all of them are, you know, planned characters. Like, they already ha know which characters it's going to be, which, like I said, is, like, kind of frustrating. Like I said, the way they presented it, too, was pretty frustrating, so... Yeah, you know, every other fighting game does this. I shouldn't be surprised at this point. I guess the only thing I'm a little bit more surprised is the actual price and $35. Yeah, like, that's like half of the game and stuff. So, these better be some pretty awesome as DLC characters. Uh, that, that actually kind of like, almost like, made me like think, should I wait for a price drop for this game and then get the DLC? But I thought... I might just get it all at once anyways, I mean, fuck, I did it for Infinite, why should fighters be any different and stuff? But that was like, probably the, one of the major complaints I had was, like I said, the roster and how this season pass thing came up and how they presented the marketing basically. It was, it felt like they were doing it in a very scummy way. I feel like that wasn't their intention of course, but the way it was brought out was displeasing to say the least. But, otherwise than that, uh, Fighters is shaping out to be a pretty great game. I'll let you know my full, um, thoughts when I actually get the game and start playing it and stuff. But for now, yeah, that's my thoughts on the game. I can't wait for it to drop during January. Um, this game has its goods and has its bad for me. Just because I say the game has bads for it, it doesn't mean... I hate the game. Look at Infinite. There's like a lot of stuff in Infinite I dislike, but overall I don't hate Infinite. I still like it. Fighters is no different. There's stuff in this game that I love, and there's stuff that I don't really agree with. It doesn't mean I dislike it. It just means that there's stuff that I have concern for for the game and stuff that I'm not really happy about. But yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, make sure to rate the video however you want to. Comment below what are your thoughts on Dragon Ball Fighters. Also, subscribe to my channel for more content if you are interested on what you're seeing. Uh, make sure to follow my Twitter. My Twitter is at EvilocityMate. And add me on PSN if you do have a PSN account. My username is the exact same as my YouTube username, which is Evelocity012. Now with that, I wish you guys an awesome day. Peace.